right, so uh, this video is really just intended to help you guys on your performance task on this e-learning day assignment. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and find the distance from a point to a line that we're given the equation of, okay? Now just to be clear, you don't have to have a graph to actually be able to, to conceptualize what's going on here, but I find that a lot of students really benefit from having this to sort of look at and work off of, okay? So I went ahead and graphed the line y is equal to 1 3rd x minus 6. We've got our y-intercept of negative 6. You'll notice we are down 6. And we have our slope of 1 3rd. So that's our rise of 1 and our run of 3, okay? And this is how we've created this linear equation, and we've just called that line L, okay? Separately, we've got the point negative 1, 7, so I went ahead and uh, plotted a point left 1 and up 7 units, okay? So really what this comes down to is us understanding what it means to talk about distance. And if you remember back a couple of sections, um, mathematically, distance is always the shortest possible route between two objects, okay? And between a point and a line, this can get a little bit tricky at times, okay? Because after all, I could connect an infinite number of segments from point P to line L, really connecting it at any point on this line. And te technically, they are all A distance, okay? But they are not the mathematical distance, okay? Once again, we're looking for the shortest possible route. So the segment that we're going to be constructing will always meet our line at a 90-degree angle. So we are looking to construct a perpendicular line. And if you remember back to Algebra 1, you'll notice that if we have an equation, a linear equation like this, in which we know slope, the slope is, in this case, 1 third, then we should always be able to figure out what our perpendicular slope is going to be. In this case, the perpendicular slope uh, is the opposite reciprocal of 1 third, which is going to give us a negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3. Okay? Now that we have the slope of the perpendicular line, and we have a point that we want this line to pass through, point P, negative 1, 7. Uh, hopefully, what's running through your head is, is a point slope form. Y minus Y1 is equal to M times the quantity X minus X1. Okay? Where, again, if we come up here, negative 1 would be our X1 value. It's the X coordinate of our point. And 7 is our Y1 value, the Y coordinate of our point. So at this point, it's as simple as substitution. So let's go ahead and create this linear equation that is perpendicular to line L and passing through point P, okay? Y minus 7 is equal to negative 3 times the quantity X minus negative 1. That's the same as X plus 1, okay? So we've done it. We've created our linear equation here. Now, most of you would prefer slope-intercept form, and I can totally understand that. And for some reasons you're about to see, I'm going to recommend that we convert this to slope-intercept form, okay? Let's go ahead and isolate our Y variable. Let's get our x terms and our numerical terms, our constants, on the same side, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative 3 to both. I have y minus 7 is equal to a negative 3x minus 3. And now we will go through the process of using the addition property of equality to get y is equal to negative 3x plus 4, okay? So if I were to graph this, I already know where the line is, is going, essentially, okay? <clears throat> I've got my y-intercept of 4. I've got my slope of negative 3. You'll notice this goes down 3 and right 1. That follows our rise of negative 3, our run of positive 1. And we could, in fact, construct this perpendicular segment. Now, the question is, where are the two going to hit? Okay. Now, some students are simply going to count down and right, down and right, and sometimes that will work out. But for the times that it doesn't, because we're hitting between integ integral values, uh, we're going to need to go ahead and solve our system of linear equations. Okay. So if I've got this linear equation represented sort of by this red line here, and I've got this linear equation represented by the black line here, and we're looking to find where they cross, all we've got to do is think back to what a system of linear equations allows us to do. Um, <clears throat> by solving this, you are finding all solutions that the two lines share. Okay? And you'll also notice that because of the format here, because both are in slope-intercept form, I can easily use some substitution methods. Okay? Some of you may prefer elimination, and that's totally fine. Another valid way to solve a system, okay? If y is equal to negative 3x plus 4, I will use this as my substitution equation and replace the following y value with the value negative 3x plus 4, which gives us negative 3x plus 4 is equal to 1 third x minus 6. So hopefully what you're realizing here is that instead of a two-variable equation, linear equations like this, I have now, by using substitution, replaced this with a one-variable equation, one that we can now solve, okay? When I add my 3x on over, 
I'm going to get a 3 and 1 third x. Add my 6 to both sides with the addition property of equality, and I'm getting 10. And now it's as simple as converting this to an improper fraction, so it's a little easier to work with. 3 and 1 third, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 gives us 10. 10 is equal to 10 thirds x. And then asking ourselves what we need to do here. Well, if we're multiplying by a fractional coefficient, simply multiply by its reciprocal, and you are now left with a, uh, a unit value of 1, 1x. One okay, So by multiplying by 3 tenths, we've done that. So multiply the left side by 3 tenths as well. 10 over 1 times 3 over 10, the 10s reduce right out, and I'm left with 3 is equal to x. Okay, <clears throat> So I've now solved, and I know the x-coordinate of the point at which these two lines are going to cross. Of course, we still need the y-coordinate. So I can take this and plug it into either one of these equations because after all, this is the x-coordinate of the point that they share and solve for my y-value. Okay, If x is equal to 3, I'll just take it into the one right here. 1 third of 3 is exactly 1. 1 minus 6 gives us negative 5. So y is equal to negative 5. All right. So <clears throat> turns out this is going to cross at 3, negative 5. Well, so... In this case, this would have been a pretty nice one to simply count down 3, right 1. It would have met up pretty nicely. Okay, That's not always the case, and that's the reason why I wanted to show you how we go about that in another method, Okay, algebraically. So at this stage, <clears throat> you're probably wondering what's next. right? If we are finding the distance from point negative 1, 7 to this line, and we know the point that allows us to connect the perpendicular segment to that line, which will therefore create the shortest possible segment, what we're left with are two points and finding the distance between them. Okay, So let's go right back to our distance formula. d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus a y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, And in this case, we now have our two points. The first point that we had was this negative 1, 7. And the second point we've just created is a 3, negative 5. So let's go ahead and label these as x1, y1, and the other set as x2, y2. And now it's as simple as substitution and simplification. Okay, uh, x2 minus x1 is going to give us a 3 plus 1 minus negative 1 is plus 1. Leaving us with 4 squared. Uh, with our y values, we're going to have a negative 5 minus 7. We'll add, well, a negative 5 minus 7 is the same as a negative 12. So we're going to have negative 12 squared. 4 squared gives us 16. 16 plus negative 12 squared is going to give us a positive 144. And therefore, we are left with the square root of 160. Okay? <coughs> now, uh, if you were to submit this uh, via, say, Khan Academy um, on those practice problems that you've been assigned um, on the last cycle, right after your exam, you'll notice that it would have accepted this, okay? But there are other ways to simplify these roots, okay? The first thing we need to realize is that this is not a perfect square, okay? Uh, 144 is 12 squared, and 169 is 13 squared. So this is uh, this is right between the two, okay? This radical 160 is gonna be 12 point something, okay? It's not going to simplify that nicely. But there are still ways to simplify a radical in this case, okay? You'll notice 160 is the exact same as 16 times 10. There's a reason why I pulled out a 16 and factored it in this way. It's because 16 is the largest perfect square that serves as a factor of 160. Okay, So as I take the square root of 16, you'll notice I'm going to get exactly 4, and this radical 10 is left over. Okay, So this is how we would go about simplifying a radical. 4 radical 10 is actually the exact same value as radical 160. And of course, if you guys got out your calculators now and took the square root of 160, you'll find that we can get it in yet another form. The square root of 160 gives us, looks like 12.65 roughly. Okay. Now, I would recommend this the least because after all, this is just an estimation. No matter how accurate we can make it, it will never be perfectly accurate, okay? Not like radical 160 or 4 radical 10. But there we have it. We have now found the distance from this point to this line, 
and I would represent it really in any one of these three ways, okay? Good luck on your performance test, guys.